Uh, Lubabalo, do we have apologies? Can you fly it or be on the agenda? Mr. Squell. Is he here? And is, uh, where is Mr. Squell? He's not here. I will check on him now, Trey. He was here a few moments ago. Uh, do you have an agenda with you? Beam it if you have it. No, ma'am, I don't have it. Who, who else has an, has an agenda? Dineo, do you have an agenda? Uh, 2%, the agenda, Lubabalo has the agenda. Let me try and check, Chepperson. You are, what are you checking? Uh, whether I can share it on the screen. Oh, okay. I'm going to try and enable share. Uh, okay. Try and share it. Okay, Chair. Let's see what it says. And Lubabalo is back, Che. Lubabalo is back where? System. Where? Online. Lubabalo, Mr. Squela, why do you disappear like that? Uh, my, there is a message, Chair, on my side says the host has disabled screen sharing. So I'm not able to share. The host disabled yes the screen sharing so it it must be lubabal can't be me lubabal o pilo lubabalo honorable mwele se u khona ap where is he was he was here with his tie. Now, now, now. Oh, with what? Only with tie work today. He was here. Now, 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 now. Sabotage, chair. Sabotage. Oh, that's more like he has a visa. He has a dot com. Now, go on. Ufiki, let's take a fiki. Lo on. He's within the people. I, I don't know what's happening here because the sharing is is there in a bit. So I really don't know what's happening. Until Squela enters here, you will be able to share. I don't know. Do we all have the, the copy of the agenda? In the meeting? Do we all have the copy of the agenda? We do, Chair. I have, Chair. The people of the AG and the Deputy Minister, yes. do you all have the, the copy of the agenda? We don't have it, Chair, on our side from the Auditor General. You see, that's why it must be beamed. <laughs> the agenda must be beamed. Ubabalo is no way to be found. Uh, good, good evening, Chair. I have the agenda. OK, DM, thank you very much. OK, for the purpose of the, the AG's team, the agenda is as follows, uh, opening and welcoming, uh, apologies, uh, adoption of the agenda, briefing by the AG on the audit outcome of the Department of International Relations and Cooperation, 
and the African Renaissance Fund for the 2019-2020 financial year, and then its closure, Elandilayo. Did we capture that? It captured. Can we move for the adoption of the agenda? I'm told Lubabalo has problems with the network. Honorable Banza, I see your hand is up. Yes, Chair, I am moving for the adoption of the agenda. Honorable Nkosi? Honorable Yes, yeah, Okay, second it. Uh, honorable members, uh, we are holding this meeting uh, today uh, after the set news uh, our country is engulfed with uh, on the passing on of uh, uh, the AG, uh, Mr. Makwetu. And I'm sure we all saw that uh, in the in the media, uh, I want us to observe a moment of silence. Uh, I don't expect people to unmute when I say we observe a moment of silence. I'll be looking at all of you here, Obani and So, can we please observe a moment of silence in honor of the AG? Thank you very much, uh, honorable uh, members. Uh, honorable members, uh, we are really uh, saddened uh, by the passing on of our AG. A very honest account of what is happening in our departments is something that we saw uh, during his tenure, ensuring that um, in their reporting, they also unmask a uh, maladministration and also uh, unmask all sorts of uh, things that are not in line with transparency uh, in government a corrupt activities were spotted even without a being blunt about them. But his contribution a generally a was so immense a with his team, a of course, a we've seen a him nurturing a some of the younger people a amongst the team. He was not always there. He was no power monger that he wants to do everything himself. He delegated so that uh, he built uh, many personnel <coughs> around the issue of uh, auditing for our country. And we, we must commend him for that. And our hearts uh, are with uh, his family uh, during uh, these trying times. Uh, we send our condolences uh, as a portfolio committee uh, we also uh, lost a, a Palestinian a chief negotiator, Dr. Erekat, who was an advocate uh, for justice uh, for the people of Palestine. Uh, he also passed on. So these giants um, were so remarkable. Uh, both in our country, in society, and internationally, uh, there were known uh, to be people who are there. So that is called activism par excellence. So um, I want to welcome one of you uh, to this portfolio committee, hoping that uh, Team AG uh, will be strong. Um, we also appreciate uh, the fact that uh, you are here. Uh, even though it um, might not be easy uh, for you because you worked closely uh, with Mr. Makwetu. So uh, on that note, uh, honorable members, 
I'm going to allow uh, Mr. Skwela to present apologies uh, to the meeting if he has managed uh, to lock. Is he here? And is, where is Mr. Skwela? Uh, I am present, Chairperson. Okay. Uh, Okay. We see. Apologies. And my apologies. We have an apology from a minister. She's attending another meeting. And uh, also, Honorable Bechman is also attending another meeting chair. Those are the only two apologies I received, Jefferson. Okay. Uh, honorable members, those are the two apologies uh, which are registered, recorded, and submitted uh, to our uh, secretariat. Um, can we move for the adoption of the agenda? Or oh, we've adopted the agenda before Luba, uh, because Babalo was up and about, isn't it? Not of members. Can we move for the adoption of the apologies in the agenda again? Am I alone here? Honorable Moela? Honorable Chair, I propose that we move for both uh, item, the adoption of the agenda and the apologies. Thank you. Okay, can we get a second, Honorable Nkosi? Honorable Chair, I move for the adoption of both the agenda and the apologies in sequence. Thank you very much. Uh, without wasting time, uh, Honorable Members, uh, I'm going to uh, give a Team AG uh, the platform to present or brief us on the odd outcomes for the department. Who is leading the team from the AG? Good evening, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Um, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Polan Sokombela. I'm the business executive from the Auditor General's Office. Um, and I'm the leader of this team. Honorable Chair, um, with your permission, I would like to introduce uh, my team that is going to be helping me with this briefing. Mm -hmm. uh, with me, um, Honorable Chair, I have Ms. Sangeeta Kalen, who is the Deputy Business Executive from the Auditor General's Office. And I have uh, Mr. Tabiso Matladi, who is the Senior Manager from the Auditor General's Office. And I have um, Mr. Nicholas Mukwen, who is also the senior manager in the Auditor General's office. Um, Honorable Chair, on behalf of the, of the audit office, I would like to thank you um, for the words of encouragement and for the words of comfort. We are still coming to terms with the loss of our leader who, who has passed away and surprised all of us. It has really been a very difficult day for us today. We are still very traumatized. Uh, Mr. Maguetu has played a, a very big role in society, um, in the country, in the international space, mm -hmm. as well as personally. I am his product, myself. So getting the news that he is no more has really rattled us. And we really would like to apologize if today we are not uh, as effective as we used to be. But we said we would, not, we would want to come here so that we can continue with his good work and showcase it because that's what he was passionate about, auditing to build public confidence. Mm. With, with those words, uh, Chairperson, as well as honorable members, 
um, I would like to, to, to thank you a lot. Um, Honorable Chair, myself, um, I'm gonna do the opening remarks and, and, and some few slides. I saw that there were some challenges as far as sharing of the slides uh, of the documents. I'm not sure if that problem has been resolved because we would like to share the, the presentation. Lubabalo will deal with that uh, thing of sharing. Lubabalo, can, can, can we ask uh, for, your, for your help uh, to, to, to share the, our presentation, please? Uh, yes, my chief. I've, I've given permission. Okay, Tabi, so can you can you please share the, the presentation? All right, while Tabi is sharing the presentation, honorable chair and honorable members, it is an, um, really an honor for us to be, to be sitting with you again today. After we have uh, last met you last year, and at that time that we met you, the world was different to what it, was, what it is today. And nobody has imagined that we would be having this meeting virtually today. And so coronavirus has disturbed all of us. But having said that, um, ourselves as well as, as the audit team, as well as uh, the department have worked um, very tirelessly to ensure that we perform this audit, we finish it, so that we can be able to come and table these outcomes here. After we've reported to you, uh, honorable chair and honorable members, the audit outcomes last year, the department has embarked on a, on, a, on a process of compiling an audit action plan to, 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 to address uh, the findings of last year, especially the qualification areas um, that we had. And we have worked very closely especially with the Director General, uh, the Chief Financial Officer, the Minister, as well as the Deputy Ministers, to ensure that uh, we work very closely to ensure that the, 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 the areas of concern from last year are addressed. But before I go to those, uh, to those specific areas, Chair, I think it's important that I share the reputation promise of the Auditor General of South Africa which states that we've got a constitutional mandate and as a Supreme Audit Institution of South Africa, we exist to strengthen our country's democracy by enabling oversight, accountability and governance in the public sector through auditing, thereby building public confidence. And Honorable Chair, uh, our purpose today is to share with you the audit outcomes of DERCO and ARF so that we can be able to assist you in your, in your responsibilities to perform, to exercise oversight to, to both the department as well as ARF. If I can go to slide number five, on, um, honorable chair. On slide number five, I just want to emphasize again that um, as an audit office, our annual audits, they examine three areas, which is the first area is the financial statements where we examine the fair presentation um, and the absence of significant misstatement in the financial statements. And the second area that we examine is uh, the area of performance information or the service delivery, if you can call it like that, where we examine whether that information has been reported in a, is reliable as well as credible. So that is a very important aspect. And the third area that we examine is an area of compliance with laws and regulations governing the financial affairs of the department. So I think that is a very important issue and that is where the, 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 this presentation is going to be touching at. It's gonna to be touching in all these three areas. Um, if I can go to slide number seven. In slide number seven, that is where we are reflecting the legends or the, or the colors that uh, we are using here to demonstrate and to share the messages. Where you will say that we got a, an audit that is unqualified with no finding or the one that is called clean audit. You will say it by the color that is green and an audit opinion where we say it's unqualified but it's got findings, you will say it with the color that is yellow and also the, the one that is qualified with findings, it will have a purple color. 
I'm not going to go to other colors like um, adverse, disclaimer, and outstanding because we don't have that category in this presentation. And where, because we are also comparing year on year, we will say that where there's a movement or there's an improvement from the prior years, we will show that by the arrow that is going up, which is improved. If it's unchanged, it's going to be yellow. And then if it's regressed, it's going to be red and the arrow is going to be looking down. If I can go on a little chair to, to slide number 10. In slide number 10, uh, Honorable Chair, as I have said that um, <clears throat> since we have reported to you last year, the challenges that, you, that we had, you will remember last year that we had um, some, some concerns where we, the department was qualified on cash and cash equivalent, where the department, um, you know, we identified some differences between the cash book balance as well as the bank statements, where they were not, they were, the, the reconciliations were not done, and we ended up um, qualifying the department. And also, we also had um, um, a challenge when it comes to the credibility of the fixed asset register and the assets, where uh, assets could not be accounted for. And that was a qualification that we've been having for years, for years at, the, at the department. And um, Honorable Chair, since last year, the department has um, worked very tirelessly to try and address these two qualification areas. And um, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the side of assets, they have managed to turn around uh, the, the, the qualification on assets. Uh, they have worked very hard to ensure that um, the 100% physical verification of assets is done. Um, and also, where the errors are identified in terms of discrepancies between what is on the floor and what is on the asset register. Those discrepancies are investigated. And also then there was an isolation of responsibility in the sense that the director responsible for asset management was the one that was approving that the adjustment should be made uh, in the financial statements. And it's important to mention, uh, Chairperson as well, that um, you will remember that we reported last year that the department has been using Excel to account for these assets, which was not an ideal uh, system to, 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 to utilize. And they have since uh, procured uh, a system also that is called Net Trace. And they have migrated then all the assets from the Excel version to the, to the, to the Net Trace. And there were very good controls that they've implemented there to ensure then that the data that is moved from the Excel to the net trace system is uh, a valid, accurate, and complete information. And the internal audit has played a significant role in that process to ensure that uh, they provide assurance. And they've performed uh, computer-assisted audit techniques to, very, to ensure the credibility of the information. And where the errors are identified, then they will encourage management to follow up on those errors so that they can be corrected. And with that process, uh, Chairperson, it made our job not to be very difficult. And I must say, uh, COVID-19 as well has brought some, some challenges because when the lockdown started uh, in, in, um, in March, we have visited, I think, about half of the missions <laughs> that, we, that we've selected for visit. And then the country was in a lockdown, the whole world was on a lockdown as well. And we had to, to think about the alternative ways of, of, of auditing. And fortunately, then um, we have to um, we 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 appointed uh, external audit firms, especially the audit firms that have got international footprint, to assist us with the verification of the assets in those countries. And the outcomes of the of our procedures, they revealed that the department has managed to address qualification. And I must uh, caution and also state that in as much as the department has managed to address this issue of assets, we still have identified some findings uh, on the assets. But those findings that we identified, they were below our materiality. So the department, in as much as we are commending the department for, for addressing this particular area, but then they need to tighten the internal controls more and ensure then that uh, they continue with the good work and clean up this, this particular process because we don't want to reverse it uh, when we're coming back again in the, in the following year. So I think it's important for, 
for us to, to, to specify that and to mention that particular issue. Um, the, the, the issue of assets, uh, sorry, of cash and cash equivalent uh, uh, as uh, at the department, I think is another issue uh, staying in that uh, um, uh, slide, uh, Tadiso, don't move. The, the slide is, thank you very much. Um, the issue of cash and cash equivalents, uh, Chapasi, do you all remember last year we had some challenges where um, there were some reconciling items where the cash book as well as the, 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 bank, the, the bank balances in the bank statements, there was, there was no reconciling items there. And also there was no um, source documents or supporting documents to support uh, these differences. And as a result, then we qualified the departments on cash and cash equivalents. And also, we, you will remember that we, we, we recommended to them as well to, to do an investigation in terms of what happened here so, so that this uh, qualification can be addressed. Uh, in, in an effort uh, for the department as well to try and address this qualification, the department mm -hmm. initially approached us as an audit office uh, to, to find out if we cannot perform an investigation. But after much consideration, we said, you know what? We don't think that we are, we are the right people to investigate this on the sense that um, it was, this finding was identified by us in the first place. So it was gonna create some, some, some sort of a conflict of interest on our side. We then suggested then to the director general to say, maybe appoint somebody else that is going to come with a fresh eyes and look at this and look at this issue properly. And then after that, then the department approached national treasury to assist them and uh, indeed, National Treasury came back. Um, then um, they, they suggested to them that perhaps uh, the amount that you cannot, re that you cannot uh, 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 confirm in the cash and cash equivalent account, you can reclassify them to an account that is called a disallowance account, which is which sits under receivable. Then in, an, in that effort, then the department told, did the reclassification but a uh, little to know from National Treasury that these uh, this, um, uh, this, uh, reconciling items in the cash and the cash equivalents, they were not supported by uh, documentation. So then in as much as then that reclassification was done, then they managed to address the qualification on cash and cash equivalents because we're satisfied now with what was left in the cash and cash equivalents. However, <laughs> when we're following up now, to what is sitting uh, in the in that disallowance account has been reclassified there. We the, the department then managed to uh, provide supporting documents for some of the of the transactions that were there, but for the majority of those transactions, they couldn't provide supporting evidence, and as a result, then we 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 had a limitation of scope again on that. Hence, uh, honorable chair and honorable members, you see a qualification again on the, on, the, on, the, on the accounts of the department because there's an amount of about 187 million uh, in the current year where we could not get uh, supporting documents in terms of where it's coming from. And also in the corresponding figures or in the, in the, in the prior year, I think the amount is about 140 million. So those are big amounts and they are associated with cash and cash equivalents. So they are quite risky for us. And then we, we expressed a qualified audit opinion and we've actually recommended to the department to, to do more work and actually find out where these documents are so that they can be able to clear this, uh, this qualification uh, on a regular chair. Um, so that is, that is the state of affairs as far as the qualification areas in the, in the prior year, Chairperson. As you can see, the, the, financial, the, the financial accounts for the ARF, um, they, they, they either sustained the, the clean audit status or the unqualified audit opinion with no findings for the second year in a row. And we commend management for, for, for sustaining the, 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 the best practices there to ensure that ARF uh, maintains the, 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 the clean audit outcome. I'm going to stop there, Chairperson, on my side. And Tabiso uh, is, with your permission, can uh, can take over the presentation from slide number fourteen, uh, Chaperson. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sokombela. Uh, good evening, uh, honourable members. Good evening, uh, honourable chair. 
Uh, I will start from slide number 14. So on slide number 14, we're talking about uh, credible financial uh, reporting. So uh, as the lockdown uh, came with a delay, so there was an a, a approval for extension by the Minister of Finance for submission of the financial statements. Uh, usually we receive the financial statements by 31 May. Uh, and this time around, we had to receive the financial statements on the 31st of July. And both the department and the entity actually met the deadline, so we commend them for that. And then after we received those financial statements, uh, ARF did actually submit financial statements that were fit for purpose uh, without errors. And however, the department uh, submitted financial statements that were, were, had errors, uh, had errors which uh, some of them they could not uh, rectify. Uh, hence, we have a qualification the current year. So when you look at the, the slide that we have here, uh, out of the two entities, ERF, which is 50%, who is the one that submitted the financial statement without errors. And this, they sustained it from when you compare to the last year, 2018-19. Uh, and then after we've uh, taken the, both the financial statements uh, uh, through uh, audit, at the end, then DERCO is the one that remained um, with a financial statement that still have errors, uh, which now shown as a qualification to the financial statement. And we still have 50% year and 50% in the prior year. So it's a similar case as compared to the prior year. So uh, moving to the next slide, uh, this is performance uh, reporting, uh, honorable chair. So in terms of, in terms of uh, performance reporting, actually the department does very well. So in terms of the performance information uh, reports that they submitted uh, during the audit, the department actually submitted the reports that were from free from uh, any material misstatements. However, ERF is the one that struggled actually when it comes to performance reporting. So hence there you see that even in the prior year, ERF actually, uh, we, uh, when we receive the performance report of the ERF, we do actually identify errors which are subsequently corrected by management. So when you go down to at the bottom there, you see that a reliable reporting of achievement and usefulness of performance indicators. At the end, they are both 100%. After the, the, we identified issues under ERF, management went back and corrected all the uh, uh, issues that we identified. And then when you move to compliance, under compliance, uh, ERF again uh, is still doing very well. Uh, we did not identify any material non-compliance uh, in the entity. You see it remained green even when you compare to, to the prior. But however, we still have issues when it comes to the department. Uh, we're still identifying uh, material, material non-compliances, uh, of which they are, uh, they are also reported in the uh, audit report. So some of the, just to highlight, we've got in top three non-compliances. We've got non-compliance areas under procurement and contract management, uh, expenditure management, and annual financial statement. So when you look at procurement and contract management, so we found instances where uh, some contracts were extended without obtaining the necessary approvals as required by uh, the ACM uh, legislation. And then uh, some contracts actually uh, were procured. What happens is that you, uh, when there's a transversal contract, then each department that is participating in that transversal contract need to follow the, 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 the processes that are in that transversal contract. So some services were procured not in line with the transversal contract that is already in place. So. That is also concerning. And uh, some awards were actually uh, awarded to some bidders who did not actually declare whether they work for the state or they are related to people that work for the state. And uh, the one that is mostly there every year, like we still find instances of where the department does not obtain recordations when they're doing a procurement of goods and services. And the expenditure management, uh, we're still stressing that actually the department is actually not preventing fruitless and wasteful expenditure as well as irregular expenditure. And that is very concerning uh, as because this uh, is an issue that pops up every year. And then annual financial statements, uh, when you receive the financial statements for DERCO, we still identify issues that management have to go back and correct those. And that is actually not in line with the PFMA. And then when you move to the next slide, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, the status of internal controls, 
Under effective leadership, uh, as Mr. Sogombela has already highlighted, uh, we've realized, we've identified that actually the department has worked tirelessly and they've managed to reverse the qualification on uh, asset management and they've also worked to reverse the qualification under cash and cash equivalent. However, they have the, the, the current qualification now. So you see that we've got some improvement when it comes to effective leadership. And then uh, proper records keeping, uh, it remains uh, because uh, the department needs to do some further investigation in order to uh, clear up the current uh, qualification under this allowance account. And monthly controls, uh, it has improved. You see, we have a little some improvement. However, for ARF remains the same because of the uh, performance information errors that we identify, of which they always go back and uh, rectify. And then for compliance, for the airport, it remains, still remains a, a concern for us because we're still identifying uh, material non-compliance, uh, specifically on relating to SCM. And for the department, uh, risk remain a, a key issue uh, uh, because uh, usually the risk department is not fully capacitated. And in the, nine, the current year, 1920, uh, they did not even do the risk assessment that they're supposed to do. So risk management remains a concern in the department. Then when you go to assurance providers chair, honorable chair, so uh, under senior management and accounting officer, uh, we put them as yellow. You realize that that's an improvement compared to the prior year. So here we're saying under the leadership of the accounting officer, uh, Senior management actually went and worked tirelessly to make sure that they reversed the qualification under asset management, as well as cash and cash equivalents. However, it still remains yellow uh, as a concern because they still have uh, non-compliance findings as well as a qualification on uh, receivables. And then when you move to the next uh, slide, honorable chair, now we move to slide number 20, which deals with financial health. So though we are happy that the department uh, will continue the going concern, uh, however, we just want to highlight that uh, they have actually incurred an authorized expenditure in the current year, the 2019-20 audit. And this was mainly due to the ceiling that National Treasury has put on the cost of uh, employees, uh, on the cost of employees and uh, Again, uh, because the, the department operates in multiple uh, currencies, so the rent depreciation as well that affected the department. So the current budget of cost of employees does not actually cover the current field position in the department, of which is a serious problem that we see now. And we, we on this one, we encouraging the department to keep on talking to National Treasury to find solutions on this issue. And then when you move to slide number 21, Honorable Chair, uh, it still talks about uh, the unauthorized expenditure. Here, I'm just unpicking that in the, car in the prior year, they did not have any unauthorized expenditure. And in the current year, actually, they get uh, 247 million rand uh, worth of uh, unauthorized expenditure. And the reasons detailed that I just mentioned now, uh, due to the uh, ceiling that is there by National Treasury on the cost of employees, and the, the rent depreciation as the department is operating in multiple currencies. And then when you move to the next slide, uh, we go to irregular expenditure. So the one positive that we see there is that actually the irregular expenditure is actually uh, declining when you compare to the prior year. So of the 217 million that you see there, uh, the 204 million of it relates to contracts that are continuing so the multi-year contracts that are continuing. So as they spend on those contracts, as they were declared irregular expenditure, though they will have to disclose that amount as irregular expenditure. Hence, you still see them as irregular expenditure. And the nature of those irregular expenditure that uh, they are identifying is that uh, when they are uh, uh, procuring on transversal contract, they're not following the processes that are there in place. And recordations, they're still not obtaining the recordations, and some awards were made to bidders that did not even submit declarations that they are related to people working in the state or they work for the state. And contracts were extended without the necessary approvals. So the good thing as well is that the department actually uh, is, does uh, investigate this, and then uh, that's a positive that we see in the uh, right direction. 
And then when you move to the next slide, honorable chair, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. So under fruitless and wasteful expenditure, similar case, we see that it is actually declining, but however, it remains a concern because the aim is not to see it there at all. Uh, just to mention that ARF, uh, again, they did not incur any fruitless and wasteful expenditure. So this is purely on the department. So the nature of the fruitless and wasteful expenditure is payments on unoccupied properties abroad and uh, cancellation of services such as your flights and functions. So that's how they incur their regular uh, and, uh, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. And then uh, in terms of investigations, uh, so far they've only managed to investigate 14% of the fruitless and wasteful expenditure and the 86% uh, is still uh, ongoing. And then when you move to the next slide, uh, honorable chair, slide number 24, here it still uh, talks about the supply chain management that I mentioned in the previous slide. I'm still reiterating that the, the type of findings that we identify, still to emphasize ARF have no, have, does not have any findings on supply chain management, which is very commendable. And then when you move to slide number 25, uh, here we highlighting the root causes uh, the root causes we're saying there's a slowness and uh, no response in improving key controls and address, addressing risk areas. So in terms of uh, this also deals with the error because that's where the issues are. And we're saying basic financial discipline of preparing and performing detailed reviews of monthly reconciliations, ineffective action plan on compliance monitoring because we're still identifying issues under compliance and inadequate SCM compliance monitoring and uh, processes. Uh, so when you move to the uh, slide number 26, so here we have some recommendations. Uh, it's for both the department and, uh, and the portfolio committee. So for the department, honorable chair, we're saying uh, implement action plans simultaneously to address audit findings, especially in compliance with legislation, ensure that all procurement process has been subjected to review by SEM units prior to approval or award, Improve communication between the missions and head office to avoid instances where there's in contradiction information supporting financial statements as evidence in the audit of cash and cash equivalent, receivables and tangible capital assets. So we say they must continue preparing the monthly reconciliations that they were doing. Also, they must continue with the 100% asset verification because that's actually what got them out of the qualification under asset management. And then we're saying the accounting officer should ensure that uh, a culture of consequent management is maintained in the department because that's when now people start to, the behavior start to see behavior changing. Um, and to the portfolio committee, honorable chair, uh, we're saying uh, the piece, the portfolio committee should request accounting officer as well as the minister to provide feedback on the implementation and progress of action plans to ensure, to ensure improvement in the audit outcome of the portfolio. And, uh, that actually brings us to the end of our presentation. Back to you, uh, Mr. Sokombelo. It's actually to be back to the chairperson. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Back to the chairperson, to, to your chair. Thank you, thank you. Honorable Chair. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Team AG. Uh, I'm now going to allow uh, honorable members the uh, uh, to raise uh, their issues. Can, can I note hands, uh, honorable members? Honorable Ngosi, I see your hand is up. Honorable Mpanza, uh, Reverend Mushu, in that order. Oh, thanks, Chairperson. Um, and I think uh, we continue to extend our condolences to the AG and uh, your pain is our pain is felt, I think, throughout the country. Chair, the, there are several issues. I don't know whether I'm going to be limited on, on time or must I request to make a second bite? Honorable Utini. No, I'm asking. I'm saying that there are several issues. May I request to make a second bite and raise only the... I we are in a meeting, Chief. I gave you a platform. If you don't speak now, forever, keep quiet. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm. Okay. Yes. No, the, the, the first issue is um, 
I think broadly what the, the AG is saying agrees with what the Internal Audit Committee has said to us in our meeting of the 7th of October. However, in relation to uh, today's presentation, I just want to, want to get clarity from the AG whether the on performance, whether the key performance areas in the department are clear at an organizational level, at the functional level, at the service level and at individual level. Okay. And coming to the issues on, on the finances of the department chair, I think this issue on the, the receivables, I think we need uh, to know from the AG, wh what are these in, in, in greater detail? What constitute these uh, uh, receivables uh, that lead, lead, led to the qualification. And just to, to make a comment that I think that the, the advice that they must reclassify them to receivables is a good advice. However, uh, if Treasury expresses a problem with that, then it, it, for me, it creates a problem on why in the first place was it not addressed as cash and equivalent and had to be classified in order to move the department away from a qualification on cash and equivalents. In the ultimate end, it came back to the same thing. There is a qualification because what was supposed to be cash and equivalent is now reclassified as the receivables and there's no proper documentation for that. So we need an explanation on that. Um, Chair, the, on, on performance, uh, the, the performance uh, information. I think we've raised the issue around um, SCM in the past. Can the AG team indicate to us whether one SCM as currently constituted has the requisite skills which we recommended be, be done last year. Two, uh, what are the difficulties in ensuring compliance with legislation? And we, I also require a breakdown chair of this uh, huge amount on, on uh, uh, SCM. And thirdly on SCM is whether there's uh, consequence uh, management uh, in, 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 in SCM. Um, I think those, are, those, those will be my initial questions. Okay, the last one is AG says there's the financials were submitted with material uh, misstatements. Is, 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 is this related, related to the receivables only, or are there any other aspects of material misstatements by the department? Thanks, John. Uh, Chairperson, as we have that appointed. Order, that order. Yes, Chair, thanks very much. But uh, Chair, I would like to start with the uh, a disclaimer that says when accepting the presentation, which is very good, and we want to thank the team AG, but I just want to, to put a disclaimer that what they are saying is an improvement uh, when it comes to these two main issues, which is cash and cash equivalent and asset register. It was not just a magic that the department has uh, improved on this one. If it wasn't for the oversight uh, role, which was robust, and the intervention of the portfolio committee, maybe they couldn't be saying what they are saying 
uh, today. So it's not a question of blowing our own trumpet, but mm -hmm. but because we are in a formal meeting, we must raise the issue that uh, it was because of our portfolio committee collective playing an oversight role and recommending and in directing the department to come up with interventions that are going to address these two elephants uh, in the room. So that is my preamble, Chair, uh, in my input. Chair, the other issue that I want to raise uh, is the issue is the issue of um, what what is what is different that the ARF is doing that the department is failing uh, to do uh, because you 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 can't have a situation where you've got an entity within the department and uh, it's actually addressing the issues that the AG is raising. And as a result of that, then they are able to achieve uh, the clean audit. And yet the department under which this entity is operating is failing uh, to address the issues. So, so, so it's very important uh, to address uh, that issue. So um, I just want to hear from the AG team. Uh, maybe they are going to make us wise and tell us that no, the ARF is doing this and the department is not doing this. So that we'll then be in a position to hold the department accountable and say, why are we not following the good example of the entity within yourselves that is performing very well when it comes to audit issues. The other issue, Chair, that I want to raise is that the AG is saying that initially uh, the, 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 the political side, which is the executive, uh, also had challenges when it comes to audit issues. But as time goes on, they were able to address those issues and hence there are no issues when it comes to, to, to them. And again, it's the same issue that I'm raising with regard to the ARF. If, if the political side of the department can be able to address those issues and then uh, when the audit uh, process is taking place, they are seen to be addressing those issues. What, what is the problem with the department? What is it that they are failing to do when you've got the entity and the executive which is part and parcel of uh, the, 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 the components that were overseeing as a committee? So, 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 so I, I would really want to know uh, what, 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 what is happening in that one. And then Chair, on the issue of the um, uh, cash and cash equivalent. I just want to know how long have we been experiencing this problem? Is it two years, uh, one year or five years? And, and why they couldn't come up with a, a, a solution uh, to this issue? And uh, I want to know which countries out of the 125 missions that we have, which, which are these five missions? that are still experiencing these things. Uh, maybe it's premature to ask that question, maybe it can be determined by the outcome or the engagement of the uh, department and the AG uh, on that one. And, the, and then Chair, I think we must uh, emphasize on this uh, committee that the department really must come up with a mechanism, mechanism to address this issue of multi-currencies. Uh, because it's one of the issues that is causing this audit query when it comes to 
employee compensation uh, because of uh, the multi-currencies that they are operating under. And, and here, this is a reality that uh, the department will live with it for a long, long time. So they need to be proactive and be in, innovative in, in finding the, the solution and addressing this issue. Because otherwise, if they don't do that, we'll, we'll always have this uh, uh, adverse uh, audit outcomes. The other issue here is the irregular expenditure. Uh, this is becoming very, very, very uh, pertinent. And, and it's happening all the time. Uh, when are these, uh, the department going to really deal with this issue once and for all? Uh, so if there is a section or a department or individuals that are overlooking the uh, prescripts of legislation in terms of the, municipal, uh, the, 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 the public finance management act, then, then I agree agree with the Honorable Nkosi that, that consequence management must take its, its, its own course because we can't have a recurring uh, audit query uh, that is happening on issues of supply chain and we must know which are these contracts that are always awarded even if uh, or extended even if the term of them has expired. And then Chair, lastly, I just want to check uh, with the department or the AG as to what are they assisting the department in terms of addressing the issues of capacity, particularly uh, in the in the in the in the in the finance section, but bearing in mind that uh, this the finance section is not operating in silos, although or if that is the case, then there will be a problem. We've got DTGs in other. What 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 is the situation there in terms of them working together? Uh, because, of course, yes, the CFO uh, is responsible at the end of the day, but he, he or she should not be working alone. And so, 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 so the, if there's a problem, uh, what are these other uh, the, the, uh, uh, colleagues are doing uh, in, 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 in dealing with those issues? And lastly, Chair, I just want to appreciate the AG their work nicely, they've identified the problems, they've said the issues and come up with very, very clear recommendations. And those recommendations are directed to the department and the other ones are, di are directed to us as a committee. Now I want uh, to say, Chair, I support those recommendations and when the time comes, we'll then have to uh, uh, talk to them and uh, I have just preempted my position. I will really move for, for them to be adopted. Thanks so very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mbanza. Honorable Reverend Mishwe. Thank you, Chairperson. May I start by uh, Can appreciating... you, there's a, there's a request from um, our media team that uh, the portfolio committee is live. Uh, on our parliament um, uh, channel uh, that your cameras as honorable members and everyone else who speaks here, cameras must be on. Can we please adhere to that? Thank you very much. Just got a note now. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, let me start, start by appreciating the presentation we got from the team and very clear and straightforward. My first question has to do with um, outsourcing auditing in some countries. What was the overall uh, impression of the 
uh, audit teams that were appointed to go to countries that our own auditors could not go because of COVID-19. And how did that impact on the budget of the audit team? And uh, secondly, um, we were told that DECO submitted financial statements with errors they could not rectify. I need clarity on, on this because if DECO could not rectify their financial statements, did the auditors as, try to assist them to make the rectifications or nothing was done? The end was just they could not rectify the statements, which I found very unfortunate. Um, in, case, in such cases, when uh, financial statements cannot be rectified, um, what happens? Are they just left like that and then they're given um, a, or the matter is taken to the minister or what happens in such cases? Um, the, the DECO, when it comes to compliance, um, they have been making awards to bidders who did not submit the required declarations. Now, in cases where um, uh, submissions without required qualifications are still awarded to a, such a bidder, what do they use um, to convince themselves that the bidder that they are giving the award to is qualified because that bidder did not submit the required declarations. And when one looks at the scorecard given to the ARF and DERCO, the ARF obviously has done very well. They have a much better scorecard than DERCO. Now, if the audit team is asked the question, what can DERCO learn from ARF, is it a problem of leadership? Is it a problem of uh, not having sufficient consequent management? Or why is, a, is their core performing, unfortunately, not as good as the ARF? Uh, lastly, to see the unauthorized expenditure of 247 million rands, an irregular expenditure of 271 million rands. Much still has to be done in DERCO. My question there is whether consequent manage man management is almost absent, totally absent, but why are we seeing recurring of unauthorized and irregular expenditure in DERCO and what are their proposals as a way forward to ensure that we do not have such high unauthorized and irregular expenditures. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Reverend Moshe. Uh, Honorable Mueda. DP? Honorable Muela? Oh, this is Abuyanga. Honorable Muela. Honorable Msan? I'm here, Che. Oh, DP, continue. What's wrong with your gadget? Yeah, okay. no, no, thank you, Che. Honorable Che, thank you very much. Um, greetings, honorable members, colleagues. Uh, Deputy Minister Mashoko Zamini and Botas, you are saluted. Thank you very much. Let me also acknowledge the team uh, AG Honorable um, uh, in, in, in sending our condolences to uh, the entire team AG family and everybody. Uh, for their loss. Indeed, it is a great loss for all of us. Uh, 
as South Africans in the, in, the, in the world. We take this opportunity in joining Honorable Chair uh, of the Portfolio Committee in sending our condolences to the uh, family of uh, the AG and the other members of the society. Chair, let me join other honorable members and colleagues who have uh, raised some of the issues before me, uh, especially on issues of uh, uh, SCM. Uh, honorable Mkosi touched a number of issues, which I want to align myself with what he has indicated earlier on, that um, according to the analysis of the AG, that section, supply chain management, if they analyze, do we have capable, responsible, honest uh, uh, officials to serve under that uh, particular uh, uh, section, which is called supply chain management? Why am I raising this? Is because probably we are where we are now because they don't have uh, the actual skills that are required for them to be in that uh, section, the supply chain. And for us to be able to be out of that particular crisis where we are now, especially in the supply chain, we need to go deep and analyze if everybody that is aligned in that particular unit is uh, placed correctly. So if a assist me there. Why again, Chair, am I raising this is because ARF is also under uh, their code. Now, they are performing. What is it that they are doing? And who is managing finances of ARF? And who is managing? Because we know that uh, in, 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 in the department, their code, we have got the CFO that is responsible for within the department. Now, when it comes to ARF, what is it that is so easy for them to always obtain such an audit opinion compared to the department? Irregular expenditure. It has been said a lot. Where they don't comply at some point, they don't declare and all that. What is their problem according to the AG? What is it that can be done in correcting the situation? Were they, be, were they able to caution the department to say, bring one, two, three, four. There are no attachments in this, in this tender and, on, in, and all that, so that we can be able to hold somebody accountable because at the end of the day, Chair, I think we've spoken about this matter for a long time, issues of consequence management in the department. It is not for the first time today where Honorable Mkose and other Honorable Members have raised this matter of consequence management. We have raised this matter for a long time to say, understand, AG, there are issues where you are spot on, there are areas where you need to touch base on, and there are areas where we've, you, you, you have said, no, go and correct one, two, three, and four, but were they, be able, were they able to correct those issues? And issues of consequence management, I have never, we are now today, you are presenting to us AG for the second time, since we have uh, 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 in, in, in this office, now, issues of consequence management, I have never heard of any results on those issues. And it means that if we are silent again, it will continue and continue and continue, and it will affect the department. So one last thing that I want to raise, Honorable Chair, is that based on the previous recommendation, AG, the previous financial year, not this one, there were recommendations to the department, can you please um, um, uh, brief us if they were able to meet and they were able to respond to those recommendations 
that we have said to them, these are the recommendations department, go and fix one, two, three, four. Based on the recommendations that we have raised previously on the, the last pro, uh, financial previous year, where are, where are they now? So that we can be able to hold them accountable in our next session, because some of the issues, Honorable Chair, with your beautiful smile, I still want to raise them with the department because there are many issues that I want to raise with the department based on what the age is raising with us today. And I feel very strong. I'm happy because the both deputy ministers are here. On the issue of administration, previously we spoke about those issues and some of the issues are coming back here today where Honorable Deputy Minister uh, Mashiko Damini uh, uh, gave an assurance to us that some of the issues that affect the department in terms of its performance probably is based on administration and then, then they are going to fix that. So when we come back, I think Umam, Umam Kendit, our deputy minister, is going to uh, uh, brief us as to how far are they in terms of, because we have even recommended that in supply chain management, there are people who don't deserve to be in supply chain management because we, they keep on doing the same and the same mistakes. Now, I'm not sure that in that department, people who are there for a long time who can't perform, who can't do anything, then it becomes a problem. However, there is a progress, which we must appreciate all of us. There is a progress as per the presentation of the AG, but we cannot close one eye and pretend as if things are normal, especially in supply chain management. We have raised those issues and we are still again today raising those issues. And we feel very strong. I feel very strong, Honorable Chair, that the department in our next PC, where we will have the department, some of the issues will be, I think I will raise with the, with the department because the AG has presented their side, but we appreciate that. And we, we, we are going to raise some of the issues when the department uh, is here. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Let me start, Marin, without wasting most of your time. I really appreciate your time. I start, Marin, now, Chair. Thank you. As you said, Marin, can you resurface? Because that one is a marine down your cases. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, we would also like to send our condolences to Mr. Magwe, to his family and his colleagues, and thank him for the excellent work that he has dedicated. He dedicated his life to South Africans and their public purse. And also, Chairperson would like to send our condolences to the family and friends and comrades and the people of Ghana as a whole on the passing of the former president of Ghana, Mr. Jerry Rowlings, who passed away today of COVID-19. We say, may his undying revolutionary spirit continue to rise and rest in peace. Chairperson, the findings today that we are told and they are presented by the AG do not come as a shock to us as this committee, Chairperson. However, it seems that instead of things getting better, things are getting worse. Chairperson, for a department of such caliber to issue contracts without declarations, which is a basic requirement in any contract of the state, is very alarming, Chairperson. But we have heard of these before and we are still hearing of them today. And cash on cash, like the AG has pre presented, 140 million to 187 million. 
that is the money of the public chairperson. Irregular expenditure on things which the legislation should be guiding however the department chooses not to follow legis legislation and continuously are in contravention of the legislation. Chairperson, I would like to ask the Auditor General, when are you going to invoke the Public Audit Amendment Act, which gives you the powers to personally hold financial and accounting officers responsible for any amounts that are found as irregular. Because we cannot allow this to happen each and every year with this department. A basic financial instrument which is an annual financial statement if it has to come with errors each and every year and it becomes a finding and the auditor general only wants to recommend but as parliament they were given we gave them the powers chairperson that they can hold the accounting officers liable so when are you going to invoke this act and utilize it in this department? Because next year, it will still be the same findings, Auditor General, without consequence. And we don't want to waste our time as this committee and keep on giving people time to rectify when it is very clear that this department does not want to rectify they are, they are wrongdoings or the findings. Um, Chairperson, 247 million of the public's money, unauthorized expenditure on compensation of employees. Has the AG actually looked at how many of these employees are incorrectly placed some which are not meant to be in some certain positions and are earning salaries which they are not deserving or qualified for. Has the AG actually looked at that? And what is the finding of the AG with regards to the internal audit committee of the department? What needs to be done there? What are the recommendations? that the, 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 the AG is giving us? And what are the recommendations on the unoccupied property that the AG would like to recommend for this committee and the department to rectify? And then Chairperson, let me deal with the, a little bit of politics of SADC. Let me take this opportunity because today we have the presence of the deputy ministers of this department. 430,000 people in Mozambique have been displaced. More than 2,000 people have been killed in Mozambique. The insurgency has been happening for the past three years. And when we got a presentation from the minister, we were told that SADC is waiting for a roadmap from Mozambique. The, can the deputy ministers here pre present here today maybe highlight to this committee why does SADC not want to evoke, to invoke Article 6 1 of the SADC Mutual Defense Pact, Chairperson, which clearly states that an attack on a state party shall be considered a threat to the regional peace and security, and such an attack shall be met with immediate collection action. 
Why has SADC not invoked this act? Why is SADC still waiting for a roadmap? And if there has been any progress made, what is that progress? Why are we allow, allowing our sister country to be held ransom, people to be killed, people to be displaced, women to be raped? Chaperson, what is SADC doing? What is the AU doing? South Africa is the chairperson of the AU and our neighbors are being brutally killed with no immediate action that is being taken. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, Honorable Chetty. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, we would also like to place on record our sincere condolences to the late A.G. Makweta and his family and colleagues. We thank him for having set the bar as high as he done in the A.G.'s office. And we hope that those that follow in his footsteps will pay tribute and carry out the work that he had done as meticulously as he did. Chair, let me just start off by firstly answering a question that some of my colleagues have raised. In this department, there is no consequence management. And that's the reason why this department will continue in the manner that it does. I will not receive an unqualified audit with no findings. As long as there is no consequences, as long as heads don't roll, this department will continue in the manner that they've been doing. A basic thing that has been touched by many of my other colleagues is about the supply chain management. This department has been failed by the SEM. The report speaks of the repeated failure for SEM to comply with the basics. Three quotes, any normal business, let alone a multi-billion brand or multi-billion dollar department, basic three quotes you must have. Last time we had the report, it was identified they don't have it. They don't follow that. The issue around the extension of contracts, modifying them without proper approval. It's not the first time we're hearing this. Last year we sat here, it was the same issue. The service procurement is not done in accordance. And let's just talk about the declaration that's not submitted by the suppliers. All of this is not new to us in the committee. We've heard it before. Now, Chairperson, and I am at my wit's end right now, because if the committee will recall, last year when we were dealing with the report, the DG and the CFO sat before us. And when we dealt with the report, we were told that it would be rectified. The committee must not worry. We will now be hands on. This committee's oversight has been played, as the Honorable uh, Impanza has said. As because of the vigorousness of the committee's oversight, we started to make sure that certain things were happening. But yeah, I have another concern. And it can't be right that just by simply changing over an Excel to NetSace could have such a drastic difference in assisting us to rectify the asset register and cash and cash equivalent. I'm sure there has to be more than just that. Because if that was the case, why is it that this transfer from Excel to NetSafe did not happen earlier? In the report, we were told that they had visited half the missions, but due to COVID-19 could not comply, com com complete all. My question would be then, if you did have time to complete all as you had projected, do you agree that there could be an adverse outcome? Because you must remember, we identified lots of issues in lots of missions. And you could have just went to those which are more or less more compliant, and those that you did not do were the ones that were the defaulters. The issue around the 247 million. And Chair, I'm not going to label lots of the stuff because my colleagues have already said it, so I won't be repetitive. But I just want to find out. Because in the report, you speak about rentals. Have you included 
the rentals for those properties, for example, the New York pilot project and the continued unauthorized rental. And what, as your department suggested, that this department rectify, because this has been ongoing for quite a few years. And to date, there is further expenses that have been incurred in the procurement of other properties. We speak about, or you try to justify some of the, not you, the department has to justify some of the expenses on the salaries. Now this, this committee has requested for an audit on the qualifications of the staff. And to date, we're still waiting for that. And it's similar to the fact that there is a will not to get things right for fear that it might expose certain shenanigans that has been the norm within this department. Thank you, Jefferson. Are you done, Honorable JD? Yes, Chair, thank you. I lost signal. You lost signal. Does that mean you have more questions? No, he is done, Chair. He indicated no, that he's done. It's, 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 it's concluded, Chair. OK, uh, Team AG, can you respond? Please. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson and uh, honorable members, uh, also for the messages of support, uh, of condolences. Uh, Chair, I'm going to, to, to answer the questions, but um, my team here also will um, uh, cover some of the questions uh, that um, I, couldn't, I couldn't cover. I'm going to be answering the questions, uh, Chair, in sequence, uh, you know, starting from uh, Honorable Ngozi. Um, I think on the, on the question that um, Honorable Ngozi has, uh, has asked in terms of the KPIs, I think as far as the, the, the audit of performance information is concerned, uh, the, 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 the department is doing very well in that space. Um, um, we have not identified any, any issues um, in the annual performance plan and the annual performance report in terms of how the KPIs are defined and also the information that is being reported there. You know, we, we came to a conclusion that that information is, is valid, accurate, and complete, um, meaning that uh, is, is credible. I think the, your, your other question, Honorable Gosu, was on the issue of receivables. Where you wanted to know what are these in great detail, what constitutes what constitute this that led to a qualification? Uh, Honorable Gosu, I think the, the challenge is that the source of this challenge, of this problem, is that for years the department has not been performing proper reconciliations between what is sitting in the bank account and also what is sitting in the cash book or in the in the system of financial statements. So then these amounts then um, you know have accumulated I think for over the years I think for about when we looked at it last year because we started picking up uh, this matter in the last audit where we realized that there's there's a long list of items that cannot be supported by documentation and those amounts were is about is, is, is was, was 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 millions and millions of um, of rands. So that is basically that is basically then the the issue 
here if I can unpack it. But if you, if, 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 I cannot tell you in terms of then what really these issues are, because the challenge that we have is that there are no supporting documents or source documents, you know, uh, for us to arrive at a conclusion where we can tell you, hence, we are mentioning then that this is a limitation of scope, you know, we are being limited. So in simple ways, this also creates uncertainty, a lot of uncertainty to us, which is not ideal, um, you know, for the auditors. So I think that is the, the, that is the issue. And I think the issue of, uh, uh, the issue of reclassification of this issue from cash and cash equivalent to receivables, I agree at the end of the day, the department still got a qualification, you know, because if they reclassify it, but that reclassification, they can support it with valid uh, source document. This qualification would have been addressed, you know. So I think that's the challenge that this department, then the department, the officials of the department needs to do this, recon not only to do the reconciliation, they need to get the documents that support this amount so that they can be able to allocate them at the right places. So I think, I think that's a very important thing to, to, to mention uh, then. Um, I think um, as an audit office, we share the same concerns and the same sentiment as far as supply chain management and the transgressions that we see in that space. And in as much as we are reporting that it has gone down, it's not good. You know, we cannot, um, where we're sitting, uh, you know, say that we're congratulating the department for incurring irregular expenditure. So I think that is a matter that, um, you know, is an area of concern. And also the questions from um, the honorable members as well, as far as the issue of consequence management is a very important question because we would really would like to see consequence management. And as, as we have reported in the report, we have seen that uh, the accounting officer has performed the investigations the investigations on this irregular expenditure. But then also what we want to see is the accounting officer then putting consequence management in place, meaning that people need to, to, to get disciplined. You know, you know people, we, need to, we want to see people uh, facing the music uh, as far as uh, transgressing uh, the, 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 the laws and regulations, especially when it comes to supply chain management, because that is risky. That is a very risky area. So, um, I think it will be important also um, these questions to be posed to the accounting officer in terms of what exactly, when is it doing going to be, um, uh, you know, implementing the recommendations of these investigations that were done on, on the regular expenditure. So I think that's a very important, that is a very important issue uh, to, 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 to highlight or, or to elevate. Um, the issue of material misstatements uh, in the financial statements that were submitted specifically for TERCO, uh, these areas of material misstatements are not only limited to receivables, but there are other areas as well, or, or, or classes of transactions where we had material misstatements. However, uh, these material misstatements were picked up through the audit process. And then the department managed then to correct them subsequent to us, um, you know, raising this particular issue. So I think it's important for us to mention that. However, the reason why the department is qualified on receivables is because um, they could not address that one because we, we, there was no source documents to support this 187 million that, that is sitting uh, in the receivables session. So that, that one uh, created uh, uncertainty for, for us as an audit office. Uh, Honorable Mpanza, indeed, I think, um, I think uh, you're correct. Um, the, 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 this portfolio committee has played a, a, a significant role in terms of uh, the, 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 the minimal improvements that we see in the audit outcomes, uh, specifically at DERCO, uh, because even ourselves, when we're engaging, you know, with relevant stakeholders, we can feel the impact of this portfolio committee. And we would like to commend the portfolio committee to continue 
um, you know, uh, holding the officials of the department accountable to ensure then that there's a, there's an improvement uh, in the in the in, in the portfolio. Um, I think there, there, there was there was an issue, uh, Honorable Mpanza, that you raised in terms of what is it what is it that is different that ARF is doing to what uh, DERCO is doing. I'm going to leave that question to, to, to my team, you know, because they are the ones that are on the ground. I think they will be more eloquent than, than I would be as far as that particular issue is concerned. But it's all about the discipline of financial management, the discipline of um, um, internal controls, but leadership plays a very huge role in terms of ensuring then that, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's good uh, financial management. Uh, in these entities, so I think I think that's the most important thing that I just I just want to 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 highlight. I think on the on the on the side on the issue of the political side of the department, um, which is the side of performance information. I think with Derco we come a long way as far as performance information is concerned, and I think uh, there's been uh, instability in that space. And we've got very committed uh, public servants that are that are working in that in, the, in that department that is that is responsible for performance information, and that is the one then that is that is a game changer because if you look in terms of how they are managing performance information for the department, they are doing an incredible job there. You know, so uh, as far as then the finance section is concerned, we are seeing these uh, challenges and. We are seeing this low response because you'll, you'll remember Tabi also talked about this root cause where there's a slow response in terms of how management is responding to our findings and addressing our findings. They are not moving at the pace that we would want them to move uh, as far as these issues are concerned. So I think there's a very important um, aspect uh, to, to highlight. Um, on the... I think I've, I've, I've explained the, the issue of cash and cash equivalents and how long this, uh, this matter, this department has been, has been experiencing. Um, this matter we've identified in the prior year, but upon identifying it, we found that this matter has been happening, you know, over the years. So the department then has been trying then to rectify it and to correct it. But I must say on cash and cash equivalent, it will be important to, 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 to get the accounting officer as well as the, the CFO to provide an update on this because the assurance that they gave us when we signed the, uh, the audit opinion by end of October was that they were going to rectify this particular issue, um, you, know, um, you, you know, with immediate effect. We haven't touched base with them, but it, we were very optimistic that is an issue that uh, they were going to be able to address. So hopefully when they are coming uh, to the portfolio committee to table, they will be able then to provide the progress, uh, the progress update. And as far as the which missions are experiencing these challenges, that's the challenge that we are having because we have got a limitation of scope. So it's very uncertain to us. We cannot pronounce in terms of which missions are affected by this particular issue. Um, the issue of multi-currencies, I agree, that it needs to be addressed. Uh, the issue of unauthorized expenditure, that is then a collateral damage as well, because the rent has depreciated quite substantially in the year that we are reporting, that we are reporting on. Um, I think I've already talked about the issue of consequence management. And also, I think there were questions also about the specific contracts, you know, especially the details on the specific contracts that were extended. And I think Tabiso will be able to, 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 to address those, those particular issues so that the honorable members can, can, can have an idea in terms of what the challenges are. Why, which, which, what are these contracts that keeps on getting extended and why? You know, what are the reasons? And also then, the, and then also Tabiso will address the, the, also the questions regarding the officials in the supply chain management divisions, why they keep on doing these, uh, these transgressions. Is it, an, is it a skills issue? Is it an issue of, um, you know, of just disregarding, you know, the, 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 the legislation? I think that's a very important 
that's a very important aspect for us to, to provide clarity on that uh, on that particular issue. And um, the, the the issue we appreciate uh, Honorable Mpanza on the on the recommendations because we would really would, would like to see um, the, the the portfolio committee. Um, you know, exercising oversight and taking our recommendations to, to the department. Um, Honorable uh, Reverend Moshe, on the issue of outs uh, outsourcing uh, the, the, the audit to other countries, uh, we're left with no choice, but, <laughs> but for us to adjust, because uh, you'll remember that uh, during the time that we're busy with this audit, the, we were not allowed to, to, to go out of the country country was in a lockdown. So under those circumstances, we had to take the budget that we we're going to utilize on our own and then use this budget then to use these audit firms in these countries that we, we, we wanted to verify these assets and do some work as well. So there was no over expenditure on our side as far as budget. It was a matter of shifting the budget. By the way, we, we lost our revenue. So that's how this uh, pandemic has affected us because we had to lose then our revenue so that uh, that money then can be used by us to pay these, these, uh, these audit firms. But I think I just want to mention that that was the situation. The situation has forced us to do that. Um, Derko, indeed, Derko did uh, submit uh, financial statements with errors, some of the errors um, that were picked up through the audit process, they were able to be rectified by the department, but unfortunately, the, the errors on the receivables were the one that could not be rectified. Hence, then that one resulted in the department getting a qualified audit opinion. That's why we got the qualified audit opinion in that space. So Honorable Reverend Moshe, I just wanted to, 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 to to clarify uh, that uh, particular issue. Um, the issue of um, uh, the, the, the issue of declarations and, um, and the department um, awarding uh, contracts or tenders without declaration is a very big concern. That's why we are highlighting here, you know, because the, the, the department really needs to answer why they are um, transgressing these, these regulations as well, and whether there is consequence management uh, as well uh, on these particular issues. Uh, Honorable uh, Muela, I think on the, on the issue of uh, the, the officials uh, on the supply chain management division, because I think your question is whether then we've got uh, uh, capable um, responsible, honest officials that are serving in that session. That's a good question because at DERGO we've been raising um, the findings of supply chain management for the past decade, <laughs> you know, and we seem not to be, um, you know, uh, winning uh, this battle. So it's important then that we need to start, um, you know, digging into that space. But uh, Tabiso will will address that that question. Uh, on that, on that, on that, on that, on that area, and also, also even the question of DERCO and ARF is a very important question. Um, the other question, uh, Honorable Chair, was was the issue of recommendations that we are making uh, from Honorable Muella, whether the the department is meeting those recommendations. We are saying. Uh, basically, what we are saying in this briefing is that there is notable progress that the department has made to address the recommendations that we've made in the prior year. Hence, the, 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 the qualifications on assets has been addressed. And also, they've tried to reclassify the issue on cash and cash equivalent. However, we still have some concerns because we are still seeing transgressions on supply chain management, as well as fruitless and wasteful expenditure, which is not ideal. So uh, there is no response there. So we would want to see um, all of those uh, particular areas uh, being addressed. Uh, Honorable Msane, on the issue of when are we invoking the 
the, 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 the new amendments to the Public Audit Act. Is a, that, is a, that is an area that since uh, this, um, this new law was promulgated in, uh, I think, 1st of April, 2018, 2019, uh, I, I beg my pardon, we, we have since phased it in because the new powers now gave us, the new, the new PAA gave us powers as the Auditor General of South Africa to, to issue material irregularities uh, and refer these material irregularities to public bodies. Uh, and also it gave us powers to issue recommendations and remedial actions that are binding, as well as uh, issue the certificate of debt where we say that uh, there are no actions from the accounting office. And how we have invoked it, because it's such a mammoth task for us to, to do as an audit office. We have started then in 2017-18 financial year by piloting it uh, in 16 uh, entities across the country, where there was a certain criteria that we followed, uh, where we've identified the top offenders as far as regular expenditure is concerned, and also some of the other factors that were taken into account, which are the conscious decision then that the Auditor General has taken, because in as much as these, um, these, the, 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 these, these, these new powers, you know, we needed to invoke, but there were certain factors that we needed to take into account. Uh, those factors, um, you know, are from skills and competencies within the audit office, the issue of training, you know, that needs to be there so that we can get ready, the issues of the criteria that also we're going to use to audit these areas. So you will see in our general report for 2017-18, we did a result, sorry, report the outcomes in terms of those 16 audits. For the year that is under review 2019-20, the Auditor General then made a decision also to increase that 16 to a number to 89 audits. And those 89 audits, there was a criteria also that was followed there. Also, the, the, the big expenditure, as far as, sorry, the big irregular expenditure was a factor there, but also those auditees or entities that uh, allocated um, a bigger budget also were identified to say, maybe let's, let's phase it in on them. Um, for the year 2021, the Auditor General also is still going to, 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 to make a decision in terms of whether she is going to, to, to invoke it uh, to all of the auditors. So that is the decision then that the Auditor General is still, is still, is still going to make. And your, your concerns um, are noted uh, as far as um, this new uh, Public Audit Act. But there's a lot of work um, that the audit office uh, is busy doing to ensure then that we are ready and also are implementing these new powers in a responsible manner as well. Um, the, uh, Honorable Sun, I think the issue of contracts and de declarations on the supply chain management is, a, is, a, is an issue of concern. And also, you, you are right, you know, because these are, the, these are the issues that we're not raising for the first time. And that issue of cash and the cash equivalent in date, that is public money. Hence, we would want it, we would want the department to account for that particular money. You know, hence we say do some reconciliations, do some investigations, tell us exactly where this, what, what this money was spent, was 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 spent on. Um, Honorable Chair, I'm going to request with your permission to, to hand over to, 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 to Sangeta. Uh, Sangeta will uh, try and address some of the questions that I couldn't address, um, uh, Chairperson, and she can hand over also to the team. Okay, Sangeta. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I think I'm going to attempt to address some of the issues and maybe just finish up the list in terms of the questions in, in order. I think they the questions around unauthorized expenditure and the compensation of employees that um, Honorable Member Masani raised uh, specifically around the um, uh, recommendations that we've issued. I think we, we, we follow a process to identify whether our recommendations have, have actually been um, implemented. Um, and from that process, whatever we identify has not been implemented, we generally do not then um, raise it as findings within the um, 
within the audit report. So I think to some extent then in this year that we did not find any of those matters uh, to raise. I think um, Honorable Member uh, Chetty raised the matter around consequence management, and I think Polani has uh, has answered uh, answered in those areas. Um, uh, Chairperson, through you, I think there was a question around um, was it simply the uh, transfer from Excel to Netris that actually rectified the um, asset matter? And I think from, from the perspective of uh, our audit, we identified that there was um, vigorous processes that management had put in place to actually identify um, uh, assets, do asset verification at all of the missions, uh, which was then definitely part of the cleanup that they, cleanup process that they implemented. All variances that they identified during this process, they basically then uh, communicated from the missions to, to, to the department. And I think there was a collaboration that they had run between internal audit as well as the, the department to actually rectify the asset situation. So it wasn't merely a move from um, Excel to, to a um, automated system. We do believe that to some extent an automated system can assist in ensuring that there's lack of um, human error, so that it er er eradicates a level of human error. It eradicates the a level of um, um, uh, un, um, uncertainty or perhaps non-use of just an Excel um, system, which is pretty a flat system, um, and uh, then introduces some level of um, proper document management, proper tracing of uh, of, of of assets. Um, even additional information that's required in ensuring that your assets are adequately kept um, as required by the PFMA. I think the management also then implemented monthly reconciliations. So the commitment, I think, from our side that we did identify was the implementation of our recommendations around preventative uh, controls, which we believe that these monthly reconciliations, as well as the asset verifications, is then going to be able to address this as a sustainable response uh, into the future. But this is an area that definitely one can actually have a, have a look at. I think the um, a matter, um, honorable chairperson, around the uh, rentals, um, as well as the, um, you know, the, 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 the salary specifically around the unauthorized expenditure, I'd like perhaps to ask Tabiso to address it as well uh, when he addresses the, the ARF matters. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Tabiso? Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, I think uh, the, on the question of, uh, I think there was a question on which contracts uh, that uh, were extended without the proper approvals. So just to mention, uh, I think it has to do with IT, because some of the IT contracts some is wide area network, uh, some is the maintenance of desktops and laptops uh, within the department at, at the missions and uh, network security. And uh, I think one contract as well, it has to do with uh, the storage facilities for the transmit officials uh, to the mission back, uh, to the back, back and to the missions. And then on the issue of ARF and DERCO, uh, what is the difference? I think when you look at the two, and the size and the magnitude of DERCO compared to ARF. Uh, in terms of size, ARF is very small and there is uh, it's a small team uh, of employees that are involved in ARF. So with ARF, it's very easy for, for the, I think for the accounting officer to be able to determine if there are any mistake, any, any issues in the entity and it's very easy to deal with the specific people. As in when you compare with DERCO, DERCO has too many hands and it operates in multiple uh, currencies, multiple uh, all over the world. So it's very difficult when compared to DERCO. So as well, I think in terms of DERCO, the only way for them to actually rectify these issues is to make sure that they tighten their controls, they, they understand the environment in which they're working in, uh, and make sure that consequence management as well is also implemented. I think that's the only way to make sure that DERCO turns around. But we've seen that commitment actually, and we've seen it bearing fruit when it comes to asset management and uh, cash management, because we've seen actually them moving in the same direction, all of them uh, with the same goal, and that resulted in them managing to reverse some of the qualifications. I think that was a positive 
uh, attitude. And that it can be directed in other areas as well, especially on compliance. I think we can be able to see uh, positive outcomes. And then and the issue of uh, salaries and authorized expenditure. So the issue with unauthorized expenditure is that obviously DERGO has already filled positions in place. So when National Treasury put a ceiling in place and then the, the budgeted amount for employee cost was not actually meeting the already own bodies that are in place. So I think that's how the unauthorized expenditure came about. And also them operating in different multiple currencies. So when the rent actually weakens against the major currencies, then they are actually affected uh, as the, some of those movements are not surely not budgeted. So their budget cannot cover their current expenses when it comes to employee costs. And then the skills uh, in SCM. I think the issue of skills for me, actually, one can have all the qualifications uh, that are there in the world, but without the right attitude, and the drive to actually uh, drive uh, clean administration, then we will not actually see positive outcomes. So for me, uh, the investigation that the department is actually uh, engaging on, so this is an opportunity for them to actually self-diagnose and go back to each level within the, the unit and try to identify where are the gaps actually. And then what is it that they can do to assist the, the, the unit to make sure that this, we don't identify these non-compliances again uh, going forward. I think that's an opportunity for the department to make sure that actually going forward, uh, they use those, those reports to, to, to actually, to their advantage, to ensure that they address all those recommendations and they implement controls in place to ensure that we don't have repeat uh, compliance issues. So I think that's the issue in terms of uh, uh, the SEM skills. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chair, back to you. Uh, thank you. Uh very much, um, uh, honorable members. Um, intrinsic about uh, the report uh, table before us uh, by the AG is, is that uh, every year um, uh, finance uh, in the department uh, submits uh, statements with errors. Uh, it has been a trend uh, since we started as a portfolio committee. Uh, it's not for the first time uh, they are sent back uh, by, um, by the AG. Uh, contracts are extended without authority. Uh, which contracts are those? Um, uh, poor performance and lack of capacity and knowledge um, of basic uh, accounting standards. Uh, seemingly, they are a problem uh, in the department and they are persisting. Uh, because it's not for the first time that um, this happens. I remember uh, last time the AG um, had findings uh, that a finance department uh, needs to be uh, capacitated uh, at the department. And, and I'm, I'm sitting here uh, thinking, uh, Honorable Deputy Ministers, uh, what then becomes uh, the role of the CFO if we have such uh, shortfalls and, 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 and challenges which are persisting in the department and that particular uh, department, which is uh, finance. Um, the, the AG says that uh, they visited uh, half of the missions and due to COVID, uh, they could not reach to the rest of the missions. Now, what I want to understand, and I think the portfolio would want to understand, is how many missions uh, that you were supposed to uh, visit or reach, and what is half of that, because I think half uh, sounds uh, like a, a blank check. Uh, so uh, it's important uh, that we, we understand what half is. Um, uh, you qualified uh, because of uh, receivables. Uh, why? What is wrong with the suspense account where Delco has uh, stashed uh, 188 million? What is the worst case scenario? I think that also has to be uh, explained uh, to, to the portfolio. Is it because of a, the lack of a capacity in basic accounting standards 
uh, why why is there such a, a finding? Is this a problem uh, playing out uh, in cash missions and uh, headquarters? And, and also a uh, record keeping uh, in the cash machines and, and Delco seems like a persisting um, challenge. Uh, what uh, do you say about this as, as the AG? How come Delco is not able to unpack also uh, what 188 million is, is all about? Because here we are talking about uh, the public money and uh, that accountability uh, is something that uh, we need to know and, and we need to understand uh, so that uh, we are able uh, ourselves as the portfolio committee to make interventions uh, out of an informed uh, viewpoint. Uh, Mr. Makwetu contributed to our uh, committee oversight uh, visit and because of his findings on discrepancies uh, for instance, in the New York uh, pilot project, um, we were able uh, to go and, and verify. And uh, fortunately for us, uh, we, 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 we are happy uh, that uh, he left uh, us away that we verified his findings and his findings were on point and there is no length in New York um, as he uh, discovered uh, with his team. It's something else uh, that is there, which is a building as opposed uh, to what uh, was required uh, for the department to purchase. So um, we, we, we really need to have a, a such a clarities uh, for us to adhere. Uh, to your recommendations and uh, the issue of consequence management, which is raised here today, uh, it's not raised for the first time, by the way, it's an issue which um, uh, the AG recommended uh, previously and uh, seemingly the department does not want to implement that. Uh, then where does the teeth of the AG arise? Uh, because there were findings and there were recommendations and the department is not implementing uh, those recommendations, then what begins uh, to be the teeth of uh, the, the AG on, on such instances? So, um, uh, so the unauthorized um, expenditure of 247 million uh, is that because of the contracts which were extended without authority, uh, what, what entails uh, on that uh, 271 irregular expenditure? Uh, if the AG can uh, just uh, unpack uh, those things uh, for us uh, so that we are enlightened uh, of what is it that has transpired uh, in detail before you get to that particular a, a finding. Um, so uh, on the ARF, uh, because uh, Derko has not established the SATPA, which we have uh, always uh, wanted them to establish as a separate entity of the department, as opposed to the current um, situation of ARF, uh, who does the financial statements of Derko and who does the financial statements of ARF. Is it the same, is it not the same office? Uh, the finance department uh, of DERCO, uh, who, who is the accounting authority there? Uh, because I need to know something. I'm suspecting a lot. So I think if you uh, give us an answer to that, will be able to make our own conclusions uh, on what we think uh, is happening in that particular department and arrive at a particular uh, decision as, as intervention strategy. Uh, so yeah, uh, I see Honorable Bachman uh, is, is back or his hand is, is no longer up. Honorable Mbanza is that a second bite. I don't intend to prolong the meeting. 
uh, honorable members, if they can. Uh, yes. yes. Chair. Let me allow you. Yes, Chair. No, no, no. Thanks very much. I want to build up on what you, you have also raised because we also had the issue of uh, them, uh, the department wanting to write off this one, seven, eight, seven million. But, but the question is that how can you write off something that you don't know? So, so, so we would really want to find out from the AG whether is that the procedure. People can't explain what is it as we are asking, but they have to write off it. But Chair, also with due respect, I don't uh, buy the story of uh, uh, the AG member which says the reason why RRF is performing better is because of the size and deco is, 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 is also big. You know, you know, driving an aeroplane is the same. The principle is the same. Whether it's a Boo 707 or what, 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 the principle is the same. So, so, so I, I think he, he must not come up with that, with that argument, because to me, it doesn't hold any water. The last one, Chair, the action plans that is recommended that the committee must uh, over, uh, uh, oversee from the department. Are, are we going to be provided with that plan? You can't, we can't monitor and oversee something that we don't know. So, so, so we'll, I, I'm, I'm appealing, Chair, from the AG, maybe to submit or provide that through your office so that when we monitor, we monitor something that we know. So that, that's my addition chair uh, as a second bite. Thanks very much. Honorable members, the questions which were not answered uh, by the AG, I see many hands up now. Is there, is there questions which were not answered by the AG? or you just want to raise new questions? Honorable Sam? Chair, I, my two questions were not answered on the recommendations of the unoccupied property, that's one, and what were the findings of the AG on the internal audit team's efficiency? And also, Chair, I did not honestly understand the response on the invokement of the Public Audit Amendment Act on when the response was saying that um, the AG has considered what they call a big irregular expenditure. Um, shouldn't the New York account or the incidents of New York be considered as a big irregular expenditure? Because what does the AG consider as a big irregular expenditure? Uh, what's the limit they have? Thanks, Chair. AG? Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, uh, Honorable Chair, I think the, 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 the issue, uh, I'll start with your, with your questions, Honorable Chair, and I apologize for the questions that we couldn't address. Um, you know, we will address them um, just now. On the question of what is wrong with this uh, suspended account at uh, Chairperson, Maybe let me, before I start there, I think you've asked the role of the CFO. I think the role of the CFO is to prepare credible financial statements. You know, I think it's as simple as that and to ensure that there is discipline as far as financial management of the department is concerned. Um, I believe as well, the CFO oversees uh, the supply chain management division. Um, at 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 at, uh, at Derco. So I think that's a very important um, aspect, you know, for us to mention. 
Um, I think we have also asked the, the, the number of missions uh, that we have selected. Um, I don't have the actual number that I have with me, but I think we, we were going to visit 22 missions. Um, and um, as far as assets are concerned, because what the department uh, did, because we started visiting the missions in the interim, meaning that in the interim from November last year until end of Jan, we visited, I think, about six missions. But in those six missions that we visited, the department was still busy addressing the issues of assets. So they requested us not to verify assets in those missions. So we're planning then to do the asset verification, I think on 16 missions. So when the lockdown came upon us, of those 16 missions, we visited eight missions. And then the remaining eight missions were the ones then where we used the international audit firms uh, to, to assist us. So I think that is the, that is the, you know, just in essence, in terms of what uh, the, the numbers look like. But uh, my team is here. So if there's, there are numbers that I'm getting wrong, they will correct me on those, uh, on those particular numbers. I think Honorable Chair, one other question that you've asked is what is wrong with this suspense account? Chair, this suspense account is allowed in terms of the rules of the accounting framework. However, any amounts that are disclosed in that account, they need to be supported by documents. So what is wrong with this account is that there are no supporting documents. So we cannot vouch for what is in that account. In essence, it is in simple terms, that is basically what is wrong in that account. If management can give us source documents so that we can be able to inspect them or corroborate with other information so that we can be able to provide our opinion on that account, we can be able then to know where maybe some of the amounts are supposed to be allocated. So that is basically in simple terms, the, the challenge that we are having there. There's a limitation that has been imposed and it causes uncertainty on our side. We end up not knowing in terms of what the, what the, issue, what the issue is. And I think, uh, Chair, you've asked the issue of record keeping. Indeed, that is the, the issue, that is the discipline of record keeping. And uh, the cash missions may be involved as well as that. We are not aware because of this limitation that has been imposed uh, on us uh, as auditors by, um, uh, by, by management. <clears throat> Um, and that is, and how come they are not able to unpack the 188 million is because they cannot provide us with documents that is supporting this, this amounts of 188 million. That's why they cannot be able to unpack it uh, to us. And indeed, this is public money. And um, I think it's important, um, Honorable Chair, that the, 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 the officials, the accounting officer and management, they need to be asked these questions in terms of why they are not able to provide us with source documents on this, um, on this amount. Um, your comments on the New York uh, pilot projects, uh, uh, Chairperson, uh, are noted. And also the issue of consequence management. Indeed, the, 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 the accounting officer has performed the investigations what is important now is the issue of consequence management because um, you need to table what were the recommendations of those investigations, especially when it comes to those officials that are transgressing um, supply chain management uh, legislation. So I think that's a very important aspect um, also to, 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 to raise, uh, to, 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 to mention. And on the issue of, I think, DERCO, has not established that by yes, indeed, this is a long outstanding issue. And also, Tabi, so please, uh, when, 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 when I'm finished with this, please address the issue of who prepares the financial statements between DERCO and ARF, whether is it the same officials, but the accounting authority for ARF is the director general of, uh, of, of, of the Department of International Relations. So is a, is an accounting authority there. Um, Honorable Mpanza, 
uh, indeed, the writing off of this uh, 187 million, I, I fully agree with you. How you need to write off something that you know, <laughs> you know, especially because this this is coming from the cash and bank, you know. So this is public money, so we need to be aware of it, you know, so that the decision, so that the, 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 the decision, when the department is making a decision to write it off, if it wants to write it off, at least it's a conscious decision as well as auditors as well, we are aware in terms of what is it that is being written off. So we, 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 we share the same sentiments there that um, you cannot um, uh, buy, sorry, um, write off something that you don't know. And I agree with you on the issue of ARF and their call. In as much as uh, size and the complexity may be an issue, but I think the disciplines of financial management are very important between the two. I think we have seen ARF, um, um, you know, having very good uh, preventative controls, especially when it comes to, you know, when it comes to financial and performance management you know, to ensure that they prepare credible financial statements. Um, uh, we have seen some, some, some challenges on ARF on the credibility of performance information, but uh, the, the errors that we have identified, they, they, they did manage to correct, to correct them. So it's a, it's a matter of uh, preventative controls and the disciplines of financial management. That's the difference between the two, the two, the two, the two entities. At DERCO as well as, uh, as, as, as ARF. Um, uh, Honorable Chair, can, can I request that the audit action plan, um, the accounting officer is the one that provides the, the audit action plan uh, to the committee because even ourselves, we have requested them to prepare that audit action plan. Um, so that they can um, they can provide it to us, so that we can be able to monitor whether they are implementing it. So I am requesting uh, then um, that the accounting officer is requested to to, to submit that uh, audit action plan. Um, the, the 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 issue, uh, Honourable Musane, the the the, fine, the the issue of uh, um, the issue of Internal audit. I think internal audit has played a very, a, a very, a very um, uh, a significant role in, especially in the area of uh, assets, asset management. They are um, adding, um, uh, providing assurance uh, in the, in the, you know, in the, in the, in the internal controls, in the internal control environment uh, at Terco. Um, on the on the invoke in the, on the on the public audit act in terms of what is a big expenditure in the in the in the audit office we are sitting with uh, entities that has got irregular expenditure that is sitting in billions <laughs> in billions of rands not to say for an example the irregular expenditure that is sitting at derco is not significant it is significant but we're sitting with entities, for example, that are sitting with about 27 billion rands, you know, of irregular expenditure in that entity alone, you know. So those big ticketing items were the ones, uh, Honorable Musani, that were prioritized. But because of the capacity issues and also the phased in approach then that um, the Auditor General has opted to, to follow, DERCO, did not meet the criteria because the, the irregular expenditure that they've, they've incurred is not as big com as compared to other um, entities and departments, especially when it comes to SOEs. I think SOEs have got billions because of the magnitude of the budgets uh, that they are having as well. So, so that, is the, that, is the, that is the issue there. And indeed, the issue of New York is a very big expenditure. You know, it's not like it's not a big expenditure, but we will see in terms of what then the decision of the Auditor General for the 2021 financial year, because that decision is, is still is still to be made uh, as far as other, other entities that were not covered in the 89 that uh, the, the, the Auditor General chose uh, to be there. Uh, I would request uh, Tabiso to deal with the issue of uh, the, the unoccupied properties. 
uh, and also deal with the issue of um, uh, the issue of contracts. You know, these contracts that were extended, and also um, uh, deal with the issue of um, there is another 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 question that I'm missing now uh, through your chairperson. I think yeah. If 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 Tabiso can deal with the residual um, questions, you know that that are not there, so that we don't leave <laughs> anything unanswered because we, would, we would really would like to answer all the questions. But other colleagues can come in as well, just to just to close the gap as well. Uh, to your chair, Tabiso. Thank you, chair. Uh, on the issue of unoccupied um, properties, so these are properties abroad. Uh, where the department uh, are not actually utilizing them. So you find that in some instances, uh, there's a delay in terms of when the trans some transfer officials are coming back home and when actually the department uh, is sending a replacement. So you'll find that some properties actually remain unoccupied for like eight months, nine months, sometimes a year. So that's where the issue is. And some properties that are actually just empty that they are not actually using uh, at the moment. And then on the issue of the, a, uh, the financial statements, uh, in terms of ARF, ARF have, uh, does not have staff. So they've got staff seconded from uh, the department. So it's the financial statements of ARF are prepared by the director who seconded to the entity and they are actually reviewed by the CFO. Uh, before submission to audit committee for final approval. And for the department, the financial statements are prepared by the directors in finance and the chief director in finance and for the review of the CFO, also before submission to audit committee for approval before submission into the auditors. Uh, yeah, I think those are the questions. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh... Honorable members, uh, that's the end uh, of our meeting. Uh, let me take this opportunity and uh, thank um, AG's team uh, for their briefing and the presentation uh, to the portfolio committee. Uh, it's quite enlightening um, uh, to say the least. Uh, we are going to take it from here uh, as the portfolio committee. And um, it is true uh, that the, the, the accounting authority must provide us with the audit uh, action plan uh, so that we are able uh, to implement uh, the recommendations uh, by the AG, which are uh, directed to us uh, as the portfolio committee. And the only thing that can enable us uh, to do that uh, is to have uh, the, the action plan uh, before us uh, so that we are also uh, able to monitor um, what uh, the department uh, is doing. Uh, before we close uh, our meeting, I will allow uh, Honorable Deputy Minister Kendi uh, Mashiko uh, to make an input. Over to you, DM. Well, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, there's nothing that I can, I can say, but just to appreciate that um, the report of the Auditor General and uh, as a department will be monitoring uh, the accounting officer and the management to implement the recommendation as it has been presented. Thank you very much. Um, thank you uh, very much, uh, honorable members and uh, Deputy Minister uh, Candice uh, Mashiko. Uh, the meeting uh, is uh, uh, adjourned. Um, we are going to meet uh, in our next meeting. Um, as the portfolio committee members. Uh, so uh, our meeting uh, is adjourned. Uh, thank you very much, honorable members. Long live the chair, long live. See you in Mangaung, see you in Mangaung, Chairperson. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.
Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Chair. Bye. Thank you, Chair. Bye. Thank you, Chair. Bye, Honorable Sunny.